Hey guys, Emmy Fisher here again with Navy Nomad, and we are back on the center map. Now, I know I promised some building on the Ragnarok map, but I've been having a lot of problems with Ragnarok on Primitive Plus crashing. Literally about every 10 minutes it crashes, and I have to go back and, you know, go back in, and it just gets really aggravating really quickly. I'm not entirely sure why it does that, because when I first started out on Ragnarok Primitive Plus, it wasn't doing that. So I think it may be based on location in Ragnarok. I started off in the southwest, it crashed, I mean, I played a good few hours before it actually crashed, but I got up to Viking Bay and the jungle up there, and it's just crashing and glitching all the time. I don't really know why it's doing that, hopefully the devs will fix that in the future, but I will not hold my breath on that. In any case, I've got a lot of really cool building things, uh, building styles and builds I want to do on Ragnarok, and I will get to them uh, eventually. It's just going to take a lot longer than originally planned. But we are on the center map, which is remarkably uncrashy and unglitchy on Primitive Plus. It is the dawn of another beautiful day in the tropics here. The center map really is one of my favorite maps, and I'm really not entirely sure why. It's I think it's because I was stuck on the island for so long, because all I was ever playing was Switch, that when I finally got Xbox and got access to uh, the center map, it's the first one I ended up getting, uh, it was just a, a breath of fresh air. And so I love the, the tropical aspect, I love the Redwoods area, I love the pinnacles and all that that you get on these islands out here. I think it's just a beautifully done map. I'm hoping that the devs uh, allow for more DLC uh, content made by other people, other maps. I love that Madagascar map, or I hear they're, they're talking, there's some talk about Crystal Isles, things like that. Things that I don't have access to because I'm not on PC, but uh, I'm going to be looking forward to that. So, in any case, first thing I want to do on the map here is give you a heads up to the safest place that you can possibly build on center. Once again, that's for PvE. Uh, we are... Let me show you. We take a look at the map here. Let that load in. Okay. Uh, we're at this little island down here, sort of central southern area, north of the Redwoods. It's a really great location because you've got access to obsidian, metal, crystal over on Skull Island, or conversely, over on the Pinnacles over in the Redwoods, which are just a hop, skip, and a jump, or swim in any case, away. So we're at about uh, 68 latitude and 57 longitude, and uh, that's where we are. Now, it's pretty hard to not miss this island. It's the giant flat one with a big rock pinnacle in the middle. Why is this the safest place that you can possibly build on the center map? That's because nothing spawns here. Literally nothing. Not a dodo, not a dilo, not a listro. Nothing, not even a seagull flies by here. It's this big sort of uh, area here that's peninsula in the back. Lots of wood available, lots of rock. Sorry, that's really bright. Um, lots of fiber. So any resources you can get from those three objects, so seeds, fiber, um, clay stone, stone, wood, all of that stuff. Lots of that here. It's also remarkably flat. Oh, dear. I had a moment there where I was glitching. Uh, it's also remarkably flat, so uh, I do plan to kind of build a little feudal town all kind of around this with docks and houses and things like that. Um, I'll show you the building I built here in a moment. It's going to be the town center, and it is based on the town center buildings from Age of Empires. But in any case, this is literally the safest place you can be. Now, there's plenty of resources within flying distance if you have a flyer. There's a couple of reasons why it's not as great a place to build as, say, Herbivore Island on the island map or on Tropical Island North. That is mainly because there are no actual metal or crystal spawns on the island directly, so you are going to have to travel a little bit to go and get some. Once again, not terribly far. But because there are no spawns on the island, that also is, of course, going to restrict you on uh, you know, you're not going to be able to tame anything on the island, and you're not going to be able to farm hide on the island. So, obviously the best place to really start, at least in the beginning, is going to be Tropical Island North. The largest carnivores I've seen on the beaches are going to be raptors, usually falling down from above. 
biggest thing I've even seen on that island from above is going to be a Carno, and that was really, really rare. That was only once. You also uh, usually get a, one or two, if you have your uh, dinosaur spawn rate turned up all the way, a couple of Tapaharas on the tropical island north and south. So that's a really fantastic place to start in terms of better access to resources before you get a flyer or a raft going. And once again, rafts on this map can be incredibly useful if you are sticking right in the shallows, but there are a lot of whales on this map, so you're not going to want to rely on a raft base for the most part on this map. So this is a great place to build if you want a sandbox, sort of just a building area, practice your architectural skills, build an actual town, not have to worry about being spat at by a horrifically altered Hollywood Dilophosaurus. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we all know that's not what Dilophosaurus looked like in real life. Thank you, Steven Spielberg in Jurassic Park. But uh, this is a really great place to build if you're looking for something 100% completely safe. I'm going to do a video in the future on another 100% completely safe spot. It's fairly small, but you can do a lot of things with it. It's actually in the redwoods, and nothing spawns in this particular spot. And if you've got access to a flyer, you have direct access to all the metal and crystal you could possibly need. And if you want obsidian, you just hop over to Skull Island. That'll be in a future video. I think I've got an idea for what I want to build on that base there. No, it won't be another Tudor-themed style. I know I've been loving the Tudor-themed style, uh, probably because I haven't been able to do too much on Ragnarok. But that'll be coming up in a future video. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to pop over to an Age of Empires map to show you really what I'm looking at here in, in terms of what I built on this island as the first building. All right, so let's go and take a look at the town center style on Age of Empires 2. So I apologize for the low lighting quality, but um, this is just to give you an idea of some of the basic uh, layouts and looks of the town center from Age of Empires 2. I'm actually on a just sort of editor map and just plopping down a bunch of these different town centers. This is not representative of all of the civilizations that you can get in Age of Empires 2. And I've actually added expansions since it's been added to Steam uh, over the past few years, because obviously this game is fairly old. Um, but it's really hard to see this one up at the top. Let me move it down here. The scrolling on this game has always been really weird. But in any case, we've got our basic town center shape uh, right here. So this one has a thatched roof. You can see how they've got the two sort of colonnaded areas that come off in the side, and then you've got this central square-shaped building in the back, the underside of which is open to be used for storage, workshop, etc. And then the upper area, which obviously has, you know, windows and shutters, and it's got that half-timbering Tudor-style or pre-Tudor-style themed uh, frame up there. That would be sort of, you know, the inner part of the building. If you were building this as a base, that would be your living area. And we've got what I call the quad gabled roof. I really need to see if there's some sort of a term for that, but I haven't been able to find anything yet, and I don't personally know any architects. So uh, if I find out whatever what, what that type of style of roof is called here, I will let you guys know. But in any case, uh, the buildings in this game, despite the fact that the graphics aren't the greatest, the buildings were always very beautiful buildings. Uh, they really put a lot of thought and design effort into these buildings. And you can see here, this is probably the closest to what I'm going to show you uh, that I built because it's got this sort of red tiled roof because I'm using the timber shingles. I could paint them in the future if I want. I don't know how paint takes to timber buildings yet. But here you can kind of see that um, sort of style going on. That's roughly about what you're going to see here. Uh, all of the town centers for all of the civilizations on this map are uh, very beautiful. I wish I could build them all through ARC, but once again, uh, the variety of build mechanics and building materials you have in ARC really isn't very much unless you are on PC and have the access uh, to mods. Now, I'd love to do some of these builds that have mansard style roofs. This is where you've got you know, the sloped roofs that meet in the corner. You can't do those on Vanilla Arc because the side of the roof tile will stick out to the sides. You just, you can't do that. There's, there's no way to do that as of yet. 
So I'd love to be doing these sloped roofs that have the flat tops that you see on this Mayan themed build here. I do have a lot of buildings uh, in my mind that I want to build that are based on Eight of Empires II Mayan buildings. But you can't get that sloped uh, roof there. You also don't get any of the S Plus or Homestead update uh, building uh, additions really with thatch, which really annoys me. I know that most people don't live in thatch buildings for obvious reasons. They're just weak and they're going to be broken almost instantly. But surely the devs know that a lot of people play Ark for the building aspect. So the least they could have done is added the triangle foundations and triangle ceilings for the thatch as well. I mean, I'd be building a whole Stone Age, you know, Neolithic, Stonehenge, Waddle and Daub hut looking thing if I could, but you just, you can't get that. Um, and despite the fact that thatched roofs are incredibly common in a lot of historically themed buildings. So we can't do mansard roofs. I could potentially do a roof similar to this Persian one here. It would just require a flat uh, roof, kind of decorate the top, maybe have it as an area for flyers. Um, the Asian, this is Japanese here, uh, buildings look incredibly awesome. I really love them. Uh, I do plan to do some Asian or Japanese themed builds, or as close as I can, once again, anyway, on Ark in the future. But you can see that we've got all the basic shape here, but we've got some really beautifully themed builds. So let me go ahead and take you away from this sandbox in Age of Empires 2 and show you the build I actually did on Ark that is based on this town center. Alright, so as you can see, this is the town center shape uh, that I've applied to Ark building. Uh, once again, you can do a roof like that on Ark. You can't do it the opposite way with the corners coming out. You can't do a mansard themed roof or just a sloped roof in general that you know meets in the corners and doesn't stick out. Hopefully that might be something in the future or on a PC mod. But you can see this is the basic shape of that town center here as well. Let me go ahead and show you what I've uh, sort of done with it. I haven't done a lot of decoration with this yet. I haven't decided what exactly I want to do. Uh, we've got these areas kind of sticking out on the sides here. You could throw some railings and things in here and make these animal stalls if you want. You could make them sort of central gathering areas with chairs and benches maybe put some market stalls, etc. out there. I don't really know if I'm, what I'm going to do with that because I do plan on adding some buildings around here. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, these were placed out here when I first started because uh, I needed them. They're going to be moved on the inside here, but you can see you've got this whole underground, uh, not underground, uh, first floor open area that's going to be the workshop slash storage area. Uh, you could also potentially store some smaller tames in here or create a sort of breeding room or breeding area. It's really uh, large enough to have a couple of different purposes, but this is going to be definitely my workshop themed area. And once again, you could definitely have some of that along the sides here as well. So you could, uh, you know, definitely keep your smithies and uh, foundries and all that, excuse me, foundries. Wow, that went back to a Sierra game there. Uh, refining forge, refining forges uh, out there on the edges if you wanted more room on the inside. The living quarters will be up here on this uh, first floor. And I've got a bonfire up here. Why is there a bonfire in here? Well, it's, uh, it's hiding the pillar that is sticking up through there. I hate it when the pillars stick to the roofs. Sometimes you can get away from that, sometimes you can't. So I stuck the bonfire over it and it looks a lot more natural now. But uh, in any case, You've got the sort of Tudor style half timber framing up here. I've kept the roof open like that. I could cover it off with ceilings if I wanted to. But I've kept it open because it's kind of a cool looking geometric shape and it lets a lot of light in these uh, timber shingles. Got my little bed area with some cabinets, got a chair, got some storage areas. I'm going to have the cooking area, etc., in here as well. So everything that you would need on the inside of your living space. It's plenty of room. This is, I think, four across by four across. So that's a lot of room if you're a solo player to give you a sort of living space. 
Got my preserving fire out here. I love these things. So Stone Age. A little bit of a lumber station there. So you can really just decorate this or design it to fit whatever use you need it to. Uh, it's a really sort of pretty look. The roofs in particular from above look really great. So whenever I fly into this base from gathering resources elsewhere, I'm always like, ha, look at that roof. But yeah, that's that town center based on, uh, sorry, that was a pack of M&Ms, uh, based on Age of Empires uh, 2. So if you liked this video, please hit that like button, subscribe for future videos about historically themed builds. I've got a lot of really cool ideas in my head and not enough time or game mechanics or variety to do them, but I'm going to get done what I can. Hopefully we'll pop back to Ragnarok soon. I think in the next video or so I'll be showing you that other really safe base over in the Redwoods over there. I've got an idea for a build I can do there. But uh, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in a future video.